Hello, and welcome to this quick beginner intro into Adobe Illustrator. This is meant to be a straight to the point tutorial for anyone trying to get a quick grasp of Illustrator. So without further delay, let's hop into today's video. Open up Illustrator and you can make a new file by clicking on create new, or you can also go to file new. They have different presets here, but for today's tutorial, we're just going to go with the default and hit create. So now you're in your workspace. To zoom in and out of your artboard, click the zoom tool here on the toolbar or press Z on your keyboard. And now your cursor will become this little magnifying glass and you can simply click to zoom in and alt click to zoom out. You can also hold down alt and use your middle scroller if you're using a mouse. Now click this arrow key on the top, which is the selection tool or hit V on your keyboard while holding on the space key and dragging your cursor around. You can pan across the artboard. Now let's move on to the shape tool, which is located here. By default, it's set to a rectangle, but if you click and hold, you see these other options. You can now drag out shapes. And if you want a perfect square, you can hold shift while you drag out the shape and it'll be a perfect square. And the same happens to the ellipse tool, which is also the L key command. I can make ovals or I can make a perfect circle. For the star tool, you can drag it out like this. And if you want to edit how many sides it has, before you let go of the shape, you can hit the up arrow key to add or the down arrow key to get rid of sides. So this can help you achieve a triangle. Each shape has these little anchor points on it that can be manipulated. Using the direct selection tool, which is up here or hitting A on your keyboard, you can then click on an anchor point and freely move it around however you want. You can select multiple points at once or shift select points that you want added one at a time. So let's select whatever's left of our star. We're gonna double click on this fill box here and I guess yellow, let's make it yellow. You can also do the same in this property panels to the right here and you'll have different swatches. This box under this fill is the stroke color, which is the outline. You can also change the stroke in the properties panel over here and you can alter its thickness. You can play with the opacity if you want a shape to be slightly more transparent. You can also make a shape with no fill if you click on this none option or you can make it a gradient which is also the gradient tool. You can double click on this here and change the colors that the gradient has. And you can make it a radial gradient. You can make it a linear gradient or a freeform gradient, which basically allows you to make the gradient however you think it should be. These little tabs are the properties for the tool that you have selected. You can either dock them up here or you can simply just X them out. Control Z is to undo, by the way. I'm trying to undo this color. Oh, this is a lot of undos. So let's say I also want this shape and I want it to be red. Okay, so now I have these two shapes, right? While selecting both of these shapes, I can go in the properties panel to Pathfinder. Each of these does something different. So this first one to unite will unite these two shapes. This one will get rid of the front shape. This is an intersection between where the two shapes overlap. And this is the opposite. The area that is overlapped between two shapes is deleted. You can arrange the shapes differently. So if I select the star and go to object arrange, 
and I say send to back. Now the star is behind this rectangle and it will affect the results of the Pathfinder tools. So we're going to make a copy by copying and pasting. This one, I'm going to arrange the star to the front. So if I click to minus front, we will get rid of the rectangle because it is in front. And if I do it this time, it removes the star because the star is in front. So playing around with different arrangements of which shape is behind which can alter how your Pathfinder tool works. I can also take this, let's delete one of these. If I take this and I can align it with the alignment tool horizontally. So now the two shapes are aligned horizontally and I can align them vertically. You can also do this in an entire artboard to easily center shapes. If you open your layers panel here and you can click to create a new layer, a new layer appears here. You can hide individual layers if you want to just focus on one thing at a time. In this case, everything is on one layer. So if we had layer one, everything is hidden. You can lock layers that you don't want to edit. So now that I locked layer one, I cannot select anything in layer one. This is good if you are working in multiple layers and you don't want to accidentally, you know, edit the wrong shape or object. So now our layer one has a lot going on. If I want to only focus on this red rectangle, I can double click it and now it is isolated meaning I cannot select anything else, even if it is on the same layer. If I go back a step, I can only edit things in layer one, and I cannot edit this star in layer two, which is useful because I don't have to hide layer two. I can simply just go in isolation mode to only edit things in layer one. If I go back another step, now we can edit everything. Under each layer, if you click this arrow, you can see all the sub layers, which each object is put into its own sublayer. So you can also go in here and have this selected. And you can add sublayers by pressing create new sublayer down here. The artboard tool or shift O allows you to draw another artboard. You can draw them however you want, how big you want, if you want it smaller, whatever works. And while still in the artboard tool, you can move it around. But once you exit the artboard tool, which I will do now, I can no longer edit this. You will have to go back into your artboard tool in order to edit this again. Now for the type tool, which is located here, or you can press T on keyboard. So you just click and you can type to your heart's content and in the properties panel, you can edit pretty much anything that you want about the text. Under this type tool, there is a type on a path tool, which allows you to have text move along a path. So we're going to go to our pen tool, which is located up here, or you can press P. We're going to click to make one point, click to make another point, and then press enter. This is our new line. If we go back to the type on a path tool, I can click on this path and now I can type on a path. You can do the same with your shape tool. So let's go back and make a perfect circle. Let's use this to swap the settings for the fill and the stroke. So now we have a black stroke and no fill. I will go back to this type on a path tool and now it is a circle. So now you can type along a circle and you can do the same with other shapes. There is also a tool here that types vertically. You can group elements together by selecting them and then going to object group. And now they're grouped. So anything I do to one, the same I can do to another. 
and to ungroup you can go back to object ungroup so let's delete all of this in the first artboard because it's pretty ugly and we'll go to file place and i imported this frog picture right so if i go back to my layers i don't want this on the same layer as my text so i'm going to cut go back to layer one and paste because now layer one we deleted everything in our layer one so now everything is on its separate layer now i really just want to trace this frog so i'm going to double click on layer one which is what this image is on and you'll get these options if i check template this will also automatically be checked dim images to 50 percent you can change the percentage but i'll leave it at 50. and now it's dimmed this is good if you just want to you know have reference photos on your artboards and notice that this layer automatically gets locked this is merely a template so i made a new layer by clicking this button down here and i'm going to go back to my pen tool by hitting p on my keyboard and because this frog is symmetrical let's just trace half of it so i'm gonna start here and make i dragged out to get these lines here let's turn off our fill color and i'm going to just roughly trace out this frog i want let's change the color of this layers handles because i can barely see them you can change the color of your layers by going here i think black is a little easier to see so you see how now i made a point here and i can't really make a point here without the curve getting all messed up this is not what i'm trying to do and it's because of this handle here it's telling the pen tool to make a curve following this line basically so if i hit alt and then drag this handle like this now i can make a line that fits more with what i'm trying to get here so keeping that in mind just keep going and trace the rest of your image okay so now i've traced half of this frog this line will keep going into I officially close it, but I will just hit enter to make sure that the tool is no longer trying to continue this curve. Now I'm going to hide my template. And as you can see, I have half of my frog. It's really rough, you know, ideally you would go back and fix these little like kinks in the lines to make them look more smooth. But for now, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to select it and copy and paste it. So now I have two. To flip it, I'm going to go to Object, Transform, Reflect, and it's going to be set to vertical. You can change this for whatever you're trying to achieve and the angle of which it is reflected. But I'm going to hit OK, and now I'm going to align them by nudging it using the arrow keys. And this looks pretty good, so I will select both and Control G to group them. So now I have a frog, I can select it, I can fill it, I can, let's say, make it green. Green, and look at that, it looks great. So if I want to export this as a PDF, I can go to File, Save As, and use this dropdown and save it as an Adobe PDF. Or I can go to File, Export, and Export As, and you can export it as a JPEG or a PNG, a PSD for a Photoshop file, whatever you want. Of course, make sure that throughout your creative process, you remember to go to File, Save to continuously save your project so you don't lose any progress just in case something happens to Illustrator. <laughs> Be mindful of exporting things as a JPEG when you have multiple artboards all of this white space will come out in your photo. So just make sure that you are aware of that. If you have multiple artboards, I would recommend exporting your work as a PDF so that you can get multiple pages. That just about covers the basics you need to know in order to get started in Illustrator. If this was helpful, leave a like and leave a comment if you'd like me to do more Illustrator videos. Have a totally awesome day 
and I'll see you next time.